Tilt. Welcome to another episode of Where the Stones Have a Story to Tell. And no, this is not a rerun from the last episode. We are at the same cairn that started the last episode because when we were comparing cairns and talking about piles of stones, the two that I chose turned out to have significantly more commonality than I originally thought, particularly when I went into uh, post-production on the software. I could see that what appeared to be generally uh, a haphazard pile of rocks turned out to be something with a pretty clear U-shaped structure, stones piled up in the middle, pointer stone, and they tended to have an angle outward. If you take or bisect the two arms, you're seeing where this structure faces. And it raised a question. If it looks like it's facing something, what is it facing? This happens to be at about 270 degrees. You're looking at due west. It would be where the sun would set on the equinox, spring and fall. But it raises the question of, does it face something else? And so in this episode, we are going to explore where this structure is facing. And is there anything of interest along the way? If so, we'll do the same experiment with the cairn about a half mile north from here that faces due east and see where that would take us. So we're going to shoot the azimuth on the facing or exit line here and we'll go walk the line. Let's see where it goes. Tully! Tully! So, as we approach this cairn, let's see if we can't find an angle where there was an intentional facing outward, like a prayer seat would. If you want to imagine sits, sitting in a prayer seat, there would be an angle, an angle that you would be exiting. This one's a little hard, but if I take a look from here, as you're looking over the structure itself, I would take this to be, let's say, two, ooh, this is about 255 to 260. We'll go, we'll go 255. All right, now let's do a little experiment where we're going to orienteer through the woods from tree to tree, pointing that 255, following it to the tree that we see on that, like we used to do in the military moving through the woods before the days of GPS to get from one point to the other. Here's the point of my 255 azimuth. We'll come up to this tree. And I'll put this on fast forward so you don't have to see me trudge through the woods to try to experiment with this. So if we take 255 to here, right through there. All right, let's fast forward. Okay, so on my angle, I was about, I'd say about five, 10 feet to the left of what would appear to be another cairn. I'll have to go back and measure the distance, but I'm guessing a couple hundred yards in the, in the angle uh, that we found. And let's take a look at this. Pretty broken down, you can't tell much of a structure to it except for that there. Let's take a look at that stone at the top of um, niches, or call that top stone, it's called a lintel stone, and it's what creates the cavity underneath. So, some sort of chamber or 
uh, niche. As you can see here, these stones are piled up. We'll take a look on the, on the outside, piled up here to hold this in place. So, several stones holding that in place. This stone here laid over this one, and then a pile in general. All right, so in the, uh, the facing angle out of that cairn, we've come across another cairn of some sort. It bits built into the back of an embedded boulder. We're gonna continue on this azimuth. Two fifty-five, right from this object, and see what else we find. I'm going to put you on fast forward again. All right. All right. We've gone probably about a hundred yards here. And I am, I would say about 40 feet to the left of an object we've used in a prior video that I surmised may have been an effigy of some sort. So I would say that the line I was shooting was probably about right there. And we've got an object right here. For those of you who didn't see the bird effigy episode, uh, there was another one uh, about a quarter mile away facing this direction. This one uh, may have an eye, a beak. One of the things that interests me about this structure right here is the orientation. Many a times when we see uh, structures with orientations to sunrise, sunset, noon, on, uh, the solstice or equinox, they may be involved in a ceremony related to those. Right now I've got the Sunseeker app, which I use from time to time, and it is showing what it looks like on the spring equinox, sunrise and sunset. So it just so happens this structure has what is, I've seen in other structures as well, sort of an L-shape ledge that points to one of those uh, solar events. Okay. So what have we proven with this little experiment? Uh, we have maybe not proven anything yet, uh, but taking a look at what appears to be the exit or facing azimuth out of a cairn that had a U-shaped structure, walking that couple hundred yards, and we ran across uh, two potential man-made Native American structures. We're gonna repeat this experiment in the next episode with the second cairn uh, of that last episode. That cairn, similar structure, rounded back, U-shape, relatively clear exit or facing outward azimuth, uh, is about a half mile north of the one we started out from today. So let's see if that structure faces into anything that may be considered um, ceremonial or man-made. And then we might have an operational theory as to uh, at least the relationship of some of these structures if we don't know exactly what they were probably used for. Okay, so that's uh, step one in un unraveling the mystery of these cairns that are a fair distance apart, facing opposite directions, similar structure, and uh, just seeing if they have any relationship to uh, the landscape or structures around them. Till next time, thanks for watching.